Welcome to the Daily Devotionals podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Good afternoon, Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent. Our Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is Lent, excuse me, is Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. And then Abraham said to him, uh, said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And as Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father, he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy. Or do anything to him, for I know that, for now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that the name of that place. The Lord will provide, as it is said on this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the great of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Yesterday I had a, a pastor's meeting, and at our meeting was um, a retired seminary professor. And the retired seminary professor went over this passage of Scripture, which is, uh, kind of a, a blessing for me because he knows his, his Hebrew much better than I do. And, and he pointed something out, and I, I didn't realize this until he pointed it out, that the word that is translated as provided is not the, really the correct translation. Literally, the word means seeing or sees. And, and so when we hear this last part, uh, especially in verse 14, so Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it was said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And then we go up a little bit earlier 
when Isaac asks his father Abraham, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham's reply is, God will provide himself, but it would be God will see for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. I want you to really think about this difference. Uh, this difference, I think, is, is profound because God sees us. He knows us. He sees and knows the situation. He sees and knows our individual futures. He sees and knows exactly what we will need in every situation. God sees that. And because God sees that, then he responds to that. And that's what this means. God sees and will respond to that need, will respond to that which is missing. He sees it. He sees it ahead of time. He sees our need and knows exactly how to care for that need. And so as we listen to this whole passage of Scripture, you know, we, we get this idea, you know, why would God even ask such a thing? Well, you see, Abraham was from the land of Ur, and, you know, in that land there was human sacrifice, and so maybe Abraham is looking past this and saying, well, I'm going to trust God's plan. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to trust it no matter what. And even in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 11, it points this out. It points out the fact that Abraham believed God and he looked beyond it and recognized that God could restore the life of his son. And so Abraham's faith and trust in God, Abraham saw God in faith and placed his trust in him. Abraham saw God. But God, first and foremost, saw Abraham. And to put him to the test, that Isaac wasn't a becoming an idol to Abraham, but put him to the test. And Abraham passed that test. And God saw what Abraham needed. And God did, indeed, meet that need. And so for us, too, God sees our present God sees our past. God sees our future all as one image. And as God sees these things, he knows what it is that we need before we do. And he knows how to care for that need. Now, we might call that providing, but even more so, what precedes that providing is the all-knowing nature of God the all-seeing nature of God. And so it is for you and me to have a God who knows us so well, to know all things so well, to know and see everything so well, to see our need and provide for it. May we recognize that in which God did for us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. He sees our wretched, sinful nature. He sees our need for a Savior. He meets that need himself in his own son. And that which he prevented Abraham from doing, he did for us. He gave the life of his son, his only son. And as he did so, we have our need met. He sees us. He loves us. He meets that need and gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation in the sacrifice of his son, his only son. In his name, amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask that you would fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to see our God, and see how he sees us, sees our life, sees our needs, sees everything ahead of time, 
and chooses to meet that need. The need for a savior, the need for salvation, the need for forgiveness, the need for a sacrifice, the need for a fulfillment of promise, the need for hope and life. Help us, as God sees us, to see him in return, to see him in his word, to see him in the sacraments, to see him in his love, to see him in his grace, to see him in his mercy, to see him in the gift of our salvation, in the sacrifice of his son, his only son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a blessed Fat Tuesday as uh, we head toward uh, Ash Wednesday tomorrow. Now, we won't have a devotion tomorrow, um, but we will have our Ash Wednesday service streamed, so you can follow that uh, for uh, your spiritual needs tomorrow. May the Lord see you and know you and meet your need. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.